Hi everyone, welcome back to Demetra's Dishes. So today I'm gonna to teach you how to make another delicious one pan meal. This is all gonna to come together in the oven. I'm gonna teach you how to make my keftedas yuvetsi, also known as keftedas ma manestra, which is basically the Greek style meatballs that I've done over and over on this channel. I've done so many different episodes on them, but this time I'm gonna show you how to make the Greek style meatballs baked in the oven and with orzo and a delicious tomato based sauce. It's all gonna be homemade. It's gonna be so flavorful, it can feed a crowd, and it can be warmed up the next day and heated through so you can take it with you to work or just reheat it and eat it for lunch. It does make a big batch, feeds about six to eight people, but it's oh so delicious. I think you're gonna love it. Let's go over the ingredients and then we're gonna get started. Okay, for the meatballs, we're gonna need some garlic cloves, a large onion or two small onions, some shredded Parmesan cheese, which is optional, panko breadcrumbs, crushed red pepper flakes, freshly ground black pepper, some dried oregano, and a little bit of salt. Then we're gonna need some whole milk and some eggs. I like to get all my meatball uh, ingredients ready in my food processor. I like to always begin by chopping the garlic because that should be very finely chopped at the end of it. So I always put the garlic in first. Then I go ahead and add the parsley because it's all right for the parsley to be finely chopped too. And then last, I'll go ahead and add the onion in, and you can do that in two batches. That helps everything chop up evenly, so if you wanna put half of the onion pieces in first, pulse it until everything is nice and finely chopped, put it in a big, your big mixing bowl over the meat, and then go ahead and chop up the remaining onion. That's gonna be the easiest way to get evenly chopped vegetables. You don't have to worry about it too much, but definitely don't puree it into a paste. You want it to have substance and texture. And now we're going to add the rest of these to the rest of these chopped onions to our meat mixture. Next, we're going to add all of our dry ingredients. I'm just going to mix them all up and add them to the big bowl. And basically everything else, everything is going to go in here, the milk, the two eggs. I'm just going to beat them lightly just like that, and then I'm gonna knead this mixture together until everything is well combined. That should just take a couple of minutes. This is one of the easiest recipes to make. You can make a double or a triple batch of this and store the meatballs in your freezer. They're perfect for those busy weeknights where you don't know what to make. If you have these in the freezer ready, you can just whip up a meal in no time. Now everything is well kneaded. I'm just gonna form my meatballs. Now you can make these as big or as small as you like, but this size is the size that I like. It's a little bit bigger than a golf ball. Now I'm gonna transfer as many as I wanna bake in a baking tray, the same baking tray that's going to make the whole dish. So make sure it's deep. Um, you can use a nine by 13 inch tray. If you have a round one, this is a 13 inch round. Whatever you have, a lasagna tray will do fine with this. Again, put as many meatballs as you wanna bake inside of here. The rest, you can just put them in the freezer. And once they're chilled and nice and hard, you can put them in freezer safe bags and store them for those busy weeknights like we said before. This looks good to me. Now I'm just gonna brush these with a little bit of oil. So you can prepare these meatballs two ways. Either you can bake them off in the oven like I'm gonna do and baking them at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes and then for five more minutes you can turn on the broiler so they can get nice and toasted on top. You can do that or you can pan fry them in um, a cast iron pan or in a big skillet just until they're nice and golden. You don't have to cook, cook them through. Just a couple minutes on each side till they get nice color. It's gonna deepen the flavor and they're gonna be perfect. So you can either do it on the skillet or in the oven like I just did. I like to do it in the oven and then while they're cooking in the oven, go ahead and make the sauce. Let's go over the sauce ingredients first. For the sauce, we're gonna need some crushed tomatoes. You can use canned tomatoes and then puree them, anything you have. Some kritharaki, or also known as orzo, some olive oil, salt, pepper, a small onion, some dried oregano, crushed red pepper flakes, a little bit of sugar, you can use honey too if you'd like instead of the sugar, and some garlic cloves. We're also going to need some water or chicken or vegetable broth, whatever you prefer. Now the sauce comes together in just 10-15 minutes. That's the amount of time that the meatballs take to cook in the oven, which makes this dish so easy to put together last minute. 
Go ahead and cook the onions, the chopped up onions with the olive oil. Season it with a little bit of salt and cook them over medium high heat until they're nice and soft and golden, anywhere between eight to 10 minutes. Then grate your garlic really fine. I like to grate my garlic over my microplane because it gets it really nice and thin. So go ahead and grate the garlic, add it to the onions once they're cooked and just heat it, warm it through for about 30 seconds to release that wonderful aroma. Now we're gonna add the crushed tomatoes. Season with a little bit of salt, freshly ground black pepper, the oregano crushed red pepper flakes, and the sugar to balance the acidity. You can leave out the sugar if you'd like, and you can substitute it with a little bit of honey, or you can just leave it out all together and just cook it longer until it becomes sweeter. We're gonna cook this over medium heat for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it thickens slightly. As soon as the sauce is ready, add the four cups of water or chicken stock or vegetable stock, whatever you're using to the sauce, bring it to a boil, then go ahead and give it a taste. I like to give it a taste to make sure it has, it has plenty of seasoning and it's not very sour. If the tomatoes happen to be sour, you can go ahead, go ahead and add a little bit of sugar to it to balance out the flavor. You're also gonna need plenty of salt for the orzo, so make sure you add about a teaspoon or two of salt to um, season the orzo really well once it bakes. So once the meatballs come out of the oven, let them sit on the counter for a few minutes just so that way they can rest. Then go in with a spatula and very carefully release them from the pan so that way when we add all the rest of the ingredients in, they don't break and fall apart on you. You're gonna have some bits and pieces of meatball on the bottom, don't worry about that. That's gonna deglaze as soon as we add the tomato sauce on there and it's gonna add so much flavor. Now we're gonna open the bag of orzo and put it in our baking dish. We're gonna pour the sauce on top of that and then add the salt, about a teaspoon, a teaspoon or two of salt. Mix everything up and then my oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna pop this in there very carefully because the pan is gonna be really full. So you wanna transport it very carefully to the oven to bake in the center rack uncovered for 45 minutes then take it out and then you should have about one or two cups of ice ready. That might sound a little crazy, but the ice is gonna stop the cooking process. Orzo is a very delicate pasta and it will continue to cook from the heat that's in the pan. So we're gonna go ahead and add the ice onto there just so that we can stop the cooking process because after 40 to 45 minutes, your pasta should be al dente and nice and cooked. Mix it all up and that ice is gonna stop the cooking process like we said, but it's also gonna melt and create a little bit of a sauce. I like my Uvetsi to have a little bit of a sauce to it. If you like it dry, don't worry, it's not gonna have too much liquid, but if you want more liquid, you can go ahead and boil some, wa some water and thin it out a little bit more. Go ahead and give it a taste. If it needs a little bit more salt, you can season it at this point. Last but not least, I'm gonna garnish it with some parsley. I'm also gonna crumble some feta because you guys know I love my feta cheese. I'm gonna crumble some feta on top. Instead of feta, you can also use Parmesan cheese or kefalo graviera, whatever your favorite cheese is, cheese and pasta and meatballs, we all know go great together. Go ahead and do that and then it's ready to serve. Toast some bread, make a nice salad, and you have a delicious meal on your hand that is just gonna be a total crowd pleaser. Kids love this, adults love it. I really don't know anyone who doesn't love it. Also, it reheats well the next day. So let me give you a few tips if you're gonna use this the next day. We usually have leftovers because again, it does make a really big um, batch. So the best way to warm this up is not in the oven, believe it or not. Take as much as you need and put it in a saucepan. Add a little bit of water, maybe a cup or a cup and a half of water and let it cook through on low heat so that way it's gonna have a really nice sauce to it. Once it warms through, it's ready to serve and you know, it's just gonna taste just as good as it did the first day. I'm gonna go in and give this a taste. If you like spaghetti and meatballs, you're gonna love this. This is the Greek version, baked in the oven. The meatball is so soft. All those flavors in there really come out. The parsley keeps it nice and fresh. Just the right amount of garlic in there. That sauce is super light. I've made it so many times on the channel. The pasta is cooked perfectly. I know that you guys are gonna love this. You can print the recipe on the website, www.demetriusdishes.com. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. You could also get the recipe in the description box underneath. I have the whole thing printed out step by step. I hope you guys make it. I hope you share pictures with me on social media. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.